community together here and we they do a lot of uh, activities to bring people together so one of it is the uh, tamil school uh, like which i volunteer i teach there so we teach the language and uh, uh, the culture to the kids and uh, the style is is a, a part of soka tamil organization this was started mainly for teen kids so we have kids from 7th grade onwards till like middle school and college uh, so this this program uh, venkat has been doing a great job for the last one year uh, he has various programs like uh, career what career choices uh, we have for like kids for college going kids and then leadership qualities like some programs on leadership leadership qualities how to uh, nurture and promote leadership qualities in kids so um, uh, this this program started like 3 years back uh, and i think uh, in the summer there there were like we have one uh, okay that sounds good month. thank you okay so venkat here uh, i think you can see him on the screen he he is actually the vp for style and uh, there, can you guys can... see me by the way i don't my video is on. No, 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 Kamal. Not yet, Kamal. We can hear oh. you, but I said start video, but nothing's coming up. So let me see. Uh, Kamal, if you are using uh, using our laptop, maybe you have the hide option on the uh, laptop, the toggle that can hide your camera. I uh, well, I see uh, the mute on the left. I see the video. But my... in the in your laptop, Kamal, there is a toggle that can open the camera. if you're oh, using our is? office laptop yes okay on the top there is a, a slider the a slider on the light. top yeah yes yeah, yeah. yeah. we can yeah right. we hey come yes. out okay and i'm visible <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> about the mess here okay hi, no problem yeah. thank you so do hi hi then yeah i'm good so thank you very much for taking time on a saturday evening and uh, so you know doing this uh, we really appreciate this thank you very much and now uh, we'll just you are to get people here and um, just, uh, like probably in another uh, minute or two we will okay. be able to yeah uh, i had like about 24 25 kids uh, registered so i'm still waiting on eight or nine more kids to come that's fine they will just wait till you us to go ahead yeah, yeah maybe we we'll right. give two more minutes it's not at Sounds six good. so we normally start at six and um, give them a couple of minutes so they should be no and this is the first time we are doing it on zoom normally we use uh, google meet okay and uh, yeah we just got this uh, access for uh, zoom and uh, i also wanted to let uh, you know that uh, this has a because some kids are not able to join we are going to record this session so i hope you're comfortable with that or uh, if you don't want i can stop it so please let me know no no problem so no, that's okay so it's just uh, just for kids we are not going to put it uh, some other place so just uh, if some kid want to uh you know go back and see so for that purpose uh, and since uh uh in uh, zoom it has that option that's why we went for it in google meet unfortunately we didn't have that option okay so yeah so no we problems. just got this and this is the first time i'm trying <laughs> zoom so i'm not so <laughs> no problem familiar with it so okay well well it's time when you are ready let me just try to get a let me see video choose a background Oh, there's no background in here. You're also using Chromebook or what? Like I'm using Chromebook. It doesn't have that option. So okay, I'm using. Uh, what am I using? I think I'm using Edge. I don't see. So you have to okay. add pictures, I think, first. Um, Kamel. Okay, no problems. Let me just try to put something on. I'll be right back. <laughs> sure. All right. Okay. Hi, Abino. How are you? Mm, I'm good. Good. That's a nice car. Yeah. What I kind of car that. is that? Uh, it's a Rover. Fancy. Hi, Gautam, Meeda. How are you? Hi, Uncle. How are you guys? Good, good. So, how are things going on with you guys? Going good? Yeah, it's going good.
So Susi, you said that you have been project manager for nine years. How long you have been? Oh no. Um, so I've been project manager for a little over two years. Oh, okay. And so prior to it, I was the business systems analyst. System. So what do you do, Venkatesh? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgive me. Is it Ven Venki? Yeah, you can call me Venkat. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. And what uh, what's your professional, or what do you do? So, what's your profession? Uh, I'm by training in education of pharmacists. Uh, I work in pharmaceutical company. Yeah. Okay. In the R&D. Yeah. Nice. Oh, does that mean you have to actually go into the office during this, or do you get to work from uh, home? Sometimes when there's mm -hmm. some lab work, that's when I do. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. all. Okay. Well, that's good then. I have a question. With the project manager. Uh, go ahead, Sugan. Um, how much money does a project manager make every year? Excellent question. I think it depends on, on your level. And I know that was one of the questions that uh, I'm, um, I'll wait for Kamal to log on as well. And so it, it depends on your level, right? Just like um, with any, um, I don't know if you've gotten this information from your prior presentations. Um, in the workplace, when you first come in, you probably start at a, a base salary. And as you gain more experience, then the salary level um, goes up. So you're thinking, is your question more, what is the starting salary for a, a project manager? Mm, mm, I, I guess, I'm not really sure though. Yeah. You wanna take a wild guess? What do you think? How much do you think a project manager kind of makes? Um, um, Probably a lot, so I'm gonna guess four hundred ninety-five thousand. <laughs> That's a lot of money. <laughs> How about we drop a zero from that? <laughs> if you drop a zero, I think you're pretty close to it. <laughs> oh. What is your um? What do you want to do when you grow up, Sugan? Oh, I wanna I wanna play basketball because. Cool. Oh, I think you're muted now. I, you want to play basketball? Is, is that Kobe in the background? Yeah, he inspired me to play. So I'm awesome. really, I'm really upset that um, he died this year. Yeah, I think it, a lot of people are very, very sad by the event. Um, are you practicing every day? Yeah, I usually practice every day unless, mm. you know, I just either don't feel like it or. Mm -hmm just something happens. I see, got it. Who do you want to play for? If you have a magic wand, you can select any of the uh, I mean, teams. I mean, personally, I want to play for the Lakers because they're mm -hmm. a hometown team. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'd, I'd also like to play for teams like like on the East Coast that get a lot of fans, like the, like the Boston Celtics or like the New York mm -hmm. Knicks where I can actually aid and get fans to watch me all over the world are you ready for the cold weather if you live in boston um no because i'm not used to that but still i mean i'll, I'll be okay if i if i'm in the nba i'll be fine mm -hmm. is that how much kobe makes four hundred ninety-five thousand, you think um, or even more, no. huh? um his net worth in 2020 is a billion dollars so probably a lot more yeah. Interesting. So Sorry, I uh, got kicked off because ready, I so tried start, to change uh, the background uh, and I joined. Okay. So we have waited for five minutes. So I think um, if others are going to join a little later, that's fine. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Thank you very much uh, for taking time, Susie and uh, Kamal, to do this session for the kids. Uh, I would like to. Venkat, we can't hear you. I don't... Brief uh, self introduction and then we can start the session from there on. Thank you. I also have a hard time kind of hearing Venkat. I think his voice is quite low. Oh, is it? Yes, yeah. Venkat. Yeah, I couldn't hear you, Venkat. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. So thank you very much for taking time, uh, Suzy and Kamal. So thank you very much for coming today. And uh, I just, uh, you know, uh, request you both to give a brief self-introduction and then we can start the session from there on uh, so right. that, uh, you know, we can uh, go on time. Okay. Thank you.
Sounds good. Kamel, do you want to get started or do you want me to get started? I can get started, no problems. Thanks. Alrighty, so let me get my thing here set up. Okay. I think I've worked with some of you guys. So let me go here, video. Let me close this. And here we go. Okay. All right, so good evening, everybody. Uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. I actually, I ended up being a computer science major. I started as a safety and systems engineering major. And then during the course of my university studies, I uh, took some computer science as electives. And I just loved, you know, the field. So long story short, graduated, you know, from the university, uh, got into programming, project leadership, and then into project management. So I've been doing, really I've been a project manager for, for about 20 years now, you know, on and off. And it's, it's quite a, it can be challenging, but it's quite a rewarding experience uh, if you're, you know, uh, you have to have kind of the type of personality for it. Uh, you know, we need to take challenges, like, you know, to create things, work with teams, you know, et cetera. So I've been at Mercury with uh, Nithya and I think some other folks for uh, since, for about 14 years now. And uh, it's, it's been quite, quite an in, in, interesting ride. And there's a lot of rewards, you know, there's a lot of long hours sometimes, but, uh, but it's, you know, just knowing that we work with a great team, there's great collaboration. Uh, Susie started, you know, working on one of my teams, and then uh, I remember when you know we had this discussion. Uh, she'll tell you about herself in a little bit, but in essence, uh, she uh, she really wanted to, uh, you know, uh, make a career of project management, and so, and that's uh, a route that she chose, and I encouraged her as well. So, uh, looking forward to this evening's, you know, uh, presentation, and I'll turn it over to uh, Susie. Okay, thanks, Camille. My name is Susie Onko. I um. Similar to Kamel, I also started in a different uh, um, major. So I went to UCI, wanted to become a doctor. So I took bio and chemistry for about a year and a half and then uh, decided to switch to computer science. And so I graduated from UCI with a computer science degree. And then um, I started my work as a business systems analyst and uh, I was a BSA or business systems analyst for about um, 17 years. And it's only in the last couple of years that I uh, transitioned over to become a project manager. I've been with Mercury working with Kamel and Nithya for almost the last um, 10 years already, a little over 10 years. And so it's, it's been wonderful kind of working with a, a team that's very supportive and very capable and wonderful leaders. Excellent, thank you. So I'll go ahead and have a little PowerPoint here. So I'll go ahead and share my screen if that's okay. Uh, let me share my screen here. There we go. So uh, while uh, Kamal is, uh, you know, Kamal is uh, trying to share his screen. Uh, a quick, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Venkat. Uh, it says the host disabled sharing of screen. So I'm not able to share my screen. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah. So um, on the bottom menu, Venkat, there is a share again. screen. Okay. Can you please try again? Okay, there we go. Okay. So I'm gonna share. Yeah, while he's trying to share his screen, so let me quickly thank uh, both Susie and Kamal for uh, taking time and doing this, uh, okay? And uh, as uh, always, if you have any questions, please type it in your chat, in the chat box. I will uh, forward it and uh, I will ask, but if it's something really uh, to be asked at that time, uh, you can unmute and uh, ask the question. Otherwise, please uh, keep your uh, audio muted as well as your phone to be in silent. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So we'll start with our, our further ado. So this basically this topic is on principles of project management. You know, um, uh, my name is Kamel Girbawi and um, uh, as I indicated, you know, in the introduction, I've been a project manager for quite some years now, and Susie uh, also is joining, and she'll be sharing some uh, some examples, you know, with the team here, with the group. So, uh, having said that, so it's kind of the agenda. We went over the introduction. We're just going to do give the folks some uh, what's project management, some definitions, uh, what what type of you know phases the project entail, you know, what do we need to take into consideration the areas we have to be knowledgeable about, you know, to, uh, to uh, carry on a project. 
some characteristics about what, what makes a good project manager, you know, some of the skills that are kind of uh, needed. Um, what causes projects to be successful as well as, you know, uh, failures. Uh, part of project management is to do lessons learned, you know, at the end of every project and to try to identify, you know, the reasons why, you know, some problems have occurred or whether the project failed or was successful, then learn from that, you know, and move forward. So I'm going to go over some project methodologies, you know, over the, over the time things are, projects have been done a little differently, you know, there's different uh, uh, methods that I use, you know, to, uh, to bring projects to, uh, you know, success and completion. And then there's going to be a little game and then a Q and A, you know, uh, I guess it's for everybody that's just Susie here, but this is kind of the schedule we're going to go by. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, perhaps, you know, as the saying goes, if you wait till the end of presentation, you may have your question answered, but if something is very pressing, uh, you know, just let us know and, you know, we can uh, answer as we go along. Okay. So here's some examples of project management, right? Is project management something new or has it been around for a while? Uh, I don't know if some of you saw the launch of the SpaceX, you know, uh, uh, you know, shuttle uh, just recently. So that's, that's, you know, what TP5 is, you know, an example. This is a very, very complex project, but uh, I put some other examples in here. So basically project management has been uh, in use for quite a long time. Um, when they build the Great Pyramids, you know, they have to have plans, they have to write projects, they have to have, you know, people, resources, you know, they had to have, you know, they knew that they need to complete a pyramid. And it took, you know, a lot of planning, organization, you know, and a lot of resources to get that done. So I uh, mentioned the Taj Mahal here as well as a, you know, project. It's uh, one of the, I think, one of the wonders of the world. So uh, it also has taken, you know, quite, uh, and that was quite a, a little while ago. I don't recall the exact dates when the Taj Mahal was built, but uh, I think it was a little while ago. Uh, so talk about space exploration where the project management is used. Uh, you know, the Apollo, the moon landing, you know, the Mars rovers that were sent out there. And some of these costs billions of dollars. So these are the kind of projects we don't want to see uh, fail. So there's usually a lot of redundancy and, you know, replication built into those. So usually the more complex and more costly the project and, you know, the more uh, redundancy, you know, uh, are kind of, uh, you know, included in there. I mentioned the International Space Station as well. Um, it, it, Project management is used in the, in the medical field, vaccine research, and I guess this is kind of a, a time where, you know, uh, I think they've been looking for a vaccine now and try to fast track that, you know, for some time. Uh, it's used in software development, which we do, you know, at Mercury, you know, the team here, uh, you know, to meet, you know, on business uh, goals and objectives. Exploration of oil is also the type of project constructions, you know, and many, many others. Okay, so these are just examples. I'm sure you can think of, you know, tons of other ones. Uh, so what defines a project management, right? So what's the definition of a project manager? It's basically the person, you know, is uh, uh, selected by the organization, you know, by customers to lead a team uh, to deliver, you know, a certain set of deliverables, of product services, right? And uh, whose job is to meet the project, you know, objectives. Um, Project management is defined as an application of skills, knowledge, tools, and techniques to meet a project goals. And I'll go over what some of those skills, knowledge areas, et cetera, are, you know, in the course of the presentation. And these are just kind of, you know, definitions. Um, what is a project? A project has a beginning and an end, right? Uh, it's a, a, a temporary, uh, you know, endeavor, which is, uh, you know, uh, taken to create a unique product service or result, and I ref, I'm ref referencing here as a reference, a definition for the PM block is a project management book of knowledge, you know, for, you know, uh, provided by the uh, Project Management Institute. So basically what you have to keep in mind is you have a, something you need to deliver. It's got to start and an end, project doesn't go forever, right? And then uh, uh, and it's got to, you know, satisfy certain goals and objectives. A program is basically a set of projects, things, you know, are pretty big. So sometimes you break, in, break them down and then a program may be, a, you know, something like sending something to the, you know, to the moon, right? It's going to be made up of many projects, you know, the mechanical side, the launch, you know, the transportation, the communication, you know, the software, you know, uh, in the shuttle, et cetera. So if then you have a whole series of projects that constitute a program, 
And uh, usually there's also, a, you know, with project management, you also have program management is how do you go about managing a whole sets of projects, right? And so those are projects with a really good goal. You know, I mentioned, you know, sending a shuttle, you know, to space and require a lot of uh, coordination. Portfolio is basically you know, an organization, the sets of programs that are managed and project to achieve business objectives. So Mercury, for, for instance, we have a PMO that has uh, basically uh, all the portfolios for the company. It could be uh, projects that are IT, it could be projects that are in support, you know, of, uh, you know, of claims and writing, billing, et cetera. So uh, some organization do have a project management organization that manages all the portfolio. So the portfolio is basically a set of programs and projects. And the project life cycle, as I indicated, is, uh, you know, project has a start as an end. And so there's multiple phases involved in a project. And, um, and the project life cycle is basically from the initiation all the way to the project closure. So beginning to end, okay. Moving forward, uh, what do we need, we need to consider in project management? Well, you know, people are like, I don't need to hire anybody. I can do it by myself, right? So I think we may have heard a lot of projects that, you know, had issues and problems. And really the reason project management is so important is because it helps, it's the glue that keeps, you know, everything together, right? So project managers have to be knowledgeable, but the project management as a, uh, you know, as a, as a technique, as a tool is uh, kind of very important as sitting here, uh, when projects do poorly, uh, you know, there's a cost associated with it. And it's, you know, the order of 10%, if not more, right? Uh, it costs money to, to do projects, you know, and when things fail and you have to do them over, uh, it's an additional expense, right? So it pays to really plan and do it properly from the start as opposed to, you know, trying to do certain activities, you know, uh, you know over and over again. And so there's some budget, you know, uh, advantages to having project management. Uh, now, projects do fail, okay, in general for various reasons, but if they poor, uh, you know, if they're not planned properly, uh, and then um, if there's changes in organizations and priorities, you know, project will fail. We see examples of, you know, this a director that comes on board and says, this is my top project, I want this done. People spend a lot of time on it, right? They invest energy, resources, and then another director comes in, right? Now the priorities have changed, now this new director comes in and says, oh, you, that project doesn't really uh, meet my needs. So we're just gonna go ahead and scrap it. This would be an example of a project failure something that was started, that had goals, that had objectives, but that was you know, pulled off the shelf for a reason and another. And I, as you see here, it's uh, over you know, a third of projects that do fail because of change, changes in prioritization. You know? uh, scope creep is something that a project managers frown upon but it's something we've got to deal with. It's basically you start with, uh, you know, the picture yourself, you want to build a house, right? You're a contractor for somebody, say, so yeah, I'd like to build this house, you know, in a, uh, you know, in, in a community. And they say, I want to start, you know, I want a two bedroom and one bath, right? And now you're halfway through and the guy decides, oh, I'm going to have people who are going to come and stay with me, my aunt, my relative, I need an extra room built, right? So you had a certain budget, you had, you had a certain schedule to get that done. Now they're adding scope to the project, right? And uh, what they we're saying here is the end product does not always, you know, reflect what was planned initially. And uh, it's something we've experienced also, you know, uh, in our line of, uh, of, you know, work here because uh, things do change, you know, constantly. And there's certain ways uh, that some of these, you know, situations are being addressed and we'll talk about it during the, you know, methodologies. And then it says that, uh, again, this is uh, where organization companies outsource their project to other, you know, other companies, other parties. Uh, I think an example is, uh, you know, in this global market, uh, we see a lot of companies that, you know, outsource, you know, maybe some other resources or staffing, you know, to other countries. And we see that, you know, at, at Mercury and a lot of other companies that outsource, you know, resources from, from Europe, from Ireland, you know, from, E.g. from India, you know, from uh, Eastern Europe, you know. Uh, so it also adds a little bit of complexity, but uh, this is something that, you know, another reason why it's very important to have project management to, to uh, keep all these, uh, you know, different groups, uh, you know, uh, organized and uh, focused on the same goal, right? 
and and as you can as you know there's a time difference between between countries right so uh, it can be challenging sometimes when there's a 12 13 hour difference and you have all you know all those people on the same project team so it takes some planning and organization you know to make this work so so these are basically your phases of your project. You know, what if project's got a start, it's got an end. So you have your initiation phase, right? Uh, basically, uh, and we'll go into that, you know, but this is kind of a nice picture that identifies, you know, how things progress. You have, there's an initiation, the start of your project. Uh, there's a planning phase, you know, when you organize, what is it we're trying to do, you know, uh, who's gonna do it. And then you have the execution phase, where basically, uh, you know, you start building things, you know, you start designing, et cetera. And then during the course of the project, uh, you know, you have a plan and uh, you need to make sure that everything goes according to plan. So you do a lot of monitoring and control to make sure that everything goes as planned. And during that, you know, this execution phase and monitoring, sometimes you do have scope changes, you know, that so you have to factor for, you know, those in and you have to make a decision, you know, as a project manager, but involving, you know, your project stakeholders, you know, your team, is it something that, you know, if it's a big change, is it something that's putting my project at risk? You know, is it gonna cost me more money? Am I gonna to have to push, you know, the, the, the completion farther out? So there's a lot of decisioning that has to be, you know, has to be made, uh, you know, during this phase in here. So, you know, to be able to, uh, you know, to identify any risk, any changes, et cetera. And once a project is done, everything's been implemented, you know, according to specifications and objectives and requirements, then the project is closed, you know, if you have contra contract you need to pay out, you pay those out, you know, if you have resources that were on the project, then perhaps they, they're freed up, you know, to work on other projects and things of that sort. So, so these are your phases at a high level. So your initiation is where you define, you know, your new project, you, re your, you, you get your authorization to start the project and usually it comes from, you know, senior management, it comes from a customer, it comes from, you know, your, your business units, uh, once you have your authorization to start your project, then you have to start your planning, you know, phase, basically what is it we have to do and uh, identify your scope, you know, what's the whole list of changes you have to do, you know, you have to build a house, how many rooms, you know, how many bathrooms in the driveway, uh, you know, you would need a swimming pool in there, you know, define everything that you want to, you want a jacuzzi, you want a little, uh, gym, you know, a room in the garage, you know, a basketball court, because one of your, you know, your kids will be, a, you know, a, a basketball professional. So you want to have a, you know, the weight room in there. You want to have a basketball court, etc. Right? Uh, and then uh, what do you, what actions you need to take, you know, in order to meet those project goals. All right. Now, once you've defined your project, your scope, your requirements, then you execute your, you know, your your project. Uh, and in essence, is to work on all the various activities that that have been identified in the planning phase. You know, to uh, to actually, uh, you know, uh, complete those various activities, uh, you know, during the course of the project. And then I talk about the monitoring and control phase. We have to track your project. You know, uh, if you have people uh, charging you, right? You have a certain budget. You may have, you know, uh, two contractors helping with building that house. Uh, you know, one is in charge of the roof. Are you supposed to start on that day? You know, so you want to make sure that things are happening. According to the plan, you know, you, you, you know, you've done, they're supposed to come the first week of, uh, you know, December, you need to make sure they're there, they're available, you know, you review the progress, you, you monitor the, the progress as well, and then you need to see if there's any changes, right, so you're supposed to get that, your house done, say, by the end of, uh, you know, March, uh, the roofers come, uh, say, as scheduled in December, but now it rains for two weeks, how do you deal with that, right? Can you build a roof with, while it's raining? Probably not. No, you have to look at uh, those are things we you know we refer to as risks, you know, and issues. So, and those are things you want to build build into your project plan during the planning phase, right? So, changes do happen. Uh, you may have an employee, you know, a great person, and they decide to leave the company, you know, or you know uh, something happens that's you know uh, uh, not planned. How do you deal with that? How does that affect your schedule and your budget, right? So. Uh, so monitoring and control is very important. And then uh, we talked about the closures. Basically, we're all done. We build the house. Everybody's happy. Uh, and then, you know, you, you pay folks out. You know, if you have contractors, then you close your project. And, um, and then you get signed off from your business, you know, uh, of your customer that I'm, you know, I'm glad, I'm happy, everything is according to plans. And, uh, and then you've, you've uh, completed your project.
So far so good? All right. So this gets a little bit technical, you know, what makes, you know, what, pro what tools and techniques do project managers, you know, use? So th this is the kind of, of uh, you know, information that uh, probably would, you know, for folks who are interested in, uh, you know, in project management, you know, there's, I, I've got a few references at the end that touch on, uh, you know, uh, perhaps the next steps, you know, references, you know, perhaps schools or online training, uh, you know, being offered that you can leverage if it's something you're interested in. So this gets a little technical, so bear with me, <laughs> okay? Uh, but it's not that complicated. And I don't know if it'll be on the test or not, but. <laughs> so these are different areas. You have integration management, uh, basically, which is, uh, you know, an area of project management that, you know, where you integrate all the different components, you know, uh, of your project uh, from the beginning to the end. Scope is uh, what is it you're trying to, uh, to achieve to complete, right? So scope entails, you know, meeting with your, uh, your stakeholders, your customers, your business units, identifying, you know, specs, what needs to get done, having, you know, a set of requirements, right? And then uh, basically this is what we're gonna build, right? I give the example of the house. Uh, you can say I want a, you know, a kitchen, but is it enough scope? A kitchen can be, you know, uh, a very simple uh, set, or they may want, you know, a building refrigerator, they may want a building, you know, a freezer, they want a, you know, a granite counter, so, you know, they want a, the island, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that come into the scope, but it's very important to define that as a beginner at the start of the project. So be as detailed as you, as you can to identify your requirements, you know, and then, uh, you know, so you have, so, you, so your plan can be realistic, right? So now, with that, now that you know everything you need to build, you have to build a schedule, right? So based on your scope, you, you're gonna come down and define all your activities, right? So in order to build a kitchen, uh, first I have to do the floor, right? It's a new house. So you, you bring the flooring people. So you have to have all your set of activities, your flooring, then you're gonna do the counters, you know, I mean, your cabinets, do your counters, you know, do your sinks, maybe, you know, do your water, your electricity, you know, and so on and so forth. So your schedule identifies all the activities, right? And duration, uh, how long is it gonna take you and, uh, you know, to achieve those? And also identifying the resources you need to do the work. Cost comes in because now you have to buy, you know, uh, and, you know, you need resources you need to buy, you know, there's material, your people cost you money, right? So if you have a contractor that say, oh, I can do it for, you know, $1,000, uh, but then, you know, it's something that you want to obviously take into consideration, right? But you should have a cost associated with all the various activities, you know, like I said, it could be material, it could be, you know, resources, you know, you need to pay the painters, you know, people do the roof, et cetera. So you need to see how much everything's gonna cost you, right? Uh, quality is important. So, you know, in software development, the, what we do, you know, uh, you know, with uh, some of the folks, you know, at Mercury is uh, a key thing is, uh, if, is to make sure, you know, like we say that your, your roof shouldn't be leaking, right? If you develop software, it's got to work according to plans. You cannot have, you know, failures. Uh, you cannot have things that break, et cetera. So quality management is very important and it's built in early also in the process. I talk about resources. You need to, you know, you need 10, 20 people for your project. Uh, where do you get them from, right? Uh, and plus, what if you ask for, you know, two persons to help on your project, but they give you like brand new people with no experience, you know, is that going to be a problem for you as a, project manager, right? So resources, you need, you need to look at the type of resources, the skill level, you know, the experience, you know, it might cost you a little more, but things will be, probably be done better or, you know, with a higher level of quality. But those are things you need to take into consideration, you know, as a project manager. Uh, communication is also important from beginning to the end of the project, right? You need to communicate with your team, with your business stakeholders, you know, uh, with your contractors uh, and it's key and then, the field that we're in, we have to you have to provide you know reports uh, you know at least on a monthly basis, if not more often you know how things are progressing. Uh, some teams have you know, use an agile form of uh, development where communication is daily, every day in the morning you know before you start your day, the team gets together you know what have I done, what do I plan today to do today, and then are there any issues impediments that impact my, my work? But communication is key. And they said that uh, communication is a, a literally about 90% of a project manager's you know, time and, and effort. So it's very key. 
risk is also something you want to take into consideration, right? Uh, you're going to send something to, you know, a, a rocket in, in you know, uh, in space, or you're going to build something, you know, what, what could go wrong, right? So you need to assess those things and make sure you have a plan for them, right? So they talk about having a risk register where you, where you try to plan, identify what type of risk you may have. I mentioned, you know, rain, you know, when it's gonna, you know, uh, when the roofers come in, you put a one week buffer in there, you know, and plan for that in case, you know, that happens. Uh, is that gonna delay some of, the, some of the other work, you know, and so on and so forth. So it's key to identify all those and you just don't do that as a project manager or by yourself, right? It's something that you do with a team, you know, with a, with your business stakeholders, you know, with your customers, you know, et cetera. But those have to be identified and they have to be really, uh, your project manager has to be transparent, you know. This is where I think we may have some problems in here, you know, what should we do? Uh, this is what I'm, what I'm suggesting and, uh, and, and plan for them and even have uh, uh, some kind of a risk management fund if you have to. Some, some organization will put, you know, X number of dollars in case they need to uh, invoke, you know, the risk, uh, management plan, but they usually for more complex projects, right? So it's just something to keep in mind. Procurement is if you, you know, say you work with contractors, you, you need to get, you know, materials and supplies and what have you, it's a process of actually, you know, getting uh, resources and materials you need for the project. And then stakeholder management is, is also very key is how can you communicate to your customer, right? Uh, if you do a project for say Kobe Bryant, he, he hires you to build something, you know, for the, uh, maybe Kobe is not a good example, you know, uh, may you rest in peace, but you know, somebody hires you to do something, it's important to keep them, you know, uh, aware of everything that goes on. Sometimes they need to sign off on things, you know, they need to prove things. So it's very important to work uh, very closely, you know, with your stakeholders and, and your, you know, your business partners. So again, a lot of, a lot of information in here, uh, but I just wanted to touch on that. So, uh, you know, so you have some uh, some awareness of what's involved in project management. So this is also a little bit technical. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but as you can see, uh, the knowledge area, which I just went over, you know, go down this way, and the project phases go down this way, right? So initiation, uh, planning, uh, execution, monitoring, control, closing, and and these areas are used, you know, during this uh, various, uh, you know. Uh, phases of the project. So integration management, well, uh, we, we said it happens, you know, initially, this is where you build a project charter. It's kind of technical, but basically a project charter gives you the authorization to start a project, you know, as a high level. Um, you need to get your plan together. Uh, and then during the scope, I talk about scope, you know, defining uh, where the scope is gonna be, collecting your requirements, uh, creating a work breed structure, identify everything you wanna do. Uh, as you said, there's a lot goes on in planning. Uh, time management is where you build your schedule, right? How long is it gonna take me to do that? What type of activities do I have? And then what type of resources do I need, right? So that's when you put this whole plan together. And, and later on, we have some examples. I think also uh, CZ has a good example of a inner project of kind of a schedule and what it looks like, right? Cost, how much is it gonna cost me? My resources, you have to do estimating and so on. And, and during this phase, monitoring control, you always keep, have to keep an eye on your cost, right? You estimated it was going to cost you like ten thousand dollars to do the kitchen, right? And now you're doing the execution, or you you know, and now you realize, oh, the guy says, oh, you know what? We forgot to to factor that in, you know. Uh, we forgot that you know we were planning to use PVC pipes, or you know, now we have to use copper pipes, right? Now the cost is going to by you know fifty percent or something like that. So you always want to make sure you always control your cost and uh, control your schedule, etc., right? So again, as you can see, this slides will be available for reference, you know, if you need to. We talk about resource management, you know, um, and then uh, making sure that the proper team members, you know, are assigned to various project act activities in the plan. So uh, working closely, you know, with the team, communication again is key, right? So make sure the proper communication goes out. Um, we talked about the risk, you know, things, uh, you have scope changes. We do work on projects where sometimes we were dependent on, on some, you know, uh, regulatory agencies, right? Maybe the Department of Insurance, you know, or maybe the, uh, the FDA, for instance, you know, we heard about this vaccine that's coming out and uh, they're trying to get something out ASAP, right? Because we have a bit of a crisis, but it has to be uh, approved. And so, you know, is that a risk, right? So we're planning on launching it out, say, 
1st of December, but now we have some regulatory compliance we have to go through and they're asking for proofs and this and that and the other. So you wanna make sure you factor that in, you know, and how, how would those risks impact the project? What are they? And then how are you gonna deal with them? And then also every risk we have a response, you know, are we gonna accept the risk? You know, are we gonna, sometimes you have risks you can just transfer to somebody else, right? We talk about contractors. So uh, say you have any, as an example, you know, right, you're building something, you have an issue with, uh, you know, the foundation or, you know, with a mold, you're gonna go out, you know, it's a risk to getting the house built, but you gotta contract that risk out to maybe a, a company that deals with mold and eradication and things of that sort, right? So you need to plan, you know, again, identify where they are, you know, plan for them and then uh, have a, a, a response, you know, for each one of them. And that's all this stuff is the role of the project manager. So there's a lot of work involved as a project manager. Uh, we talk about procurement is where you basically, you know, uh, if you have contracts, uh, kind of, you know, procure material, you know, et cetera. Uh, sometimes you have to go to a legal, you know, you have to, to uh, any contract usually involves some form of legal, uh, uh, you know, wording or what have you of contracts. So you, that might involve, you know, uh, going to a lawyer, you know, if it's just a small project, someone who just starts, you know, their own company, it's always a good thing to, you know, to make sure you get legal, you know, representation so you don't get in trouble, uh, you know, further, further down the road. But for big project or big company, uh, procurement usually involved, you know, uh, making sure that the contracts are legally sound, et cetera, right? And we talk about project stakeholders. Stakeholders are basically everybody who's got a stake in the project, right? So it's your project sponsor, it's all your different business units, you know, they have a, an interest in the project, uh, you know, your, even your team, you know, as a, as a stakeholder, the, the, end user, the, end, uh, the end user, et cetera. So um, this kind of puts everything, you know, uh, kind of in perspective. And again, there's a lot of information in here. And uh, as a project manager, there's a, a project manager professional uh, certification that's offered where, where uh, basically, uh, you have to have a very solid understanding uh, of all these processes. So there's a test. Uh, you can take, you know, the the you know the the certification. Uh, there's training classes that are offered. The test is about four hours, two hundred questions. It touches on basically uh, a lot, a lot of project management information. So I just want to give you that as an idea. So moving on, this kind of puts the whole thing together. I, I do weekly this picture and say, okay, you have your initiation, what, what happens you know, in that phase, the plan, right? Schedule test resources and budget, the execution, you start working on your stuff, you know, your monitoring and then your closure, right? And then I talk about these uh, knowledge areas, the 10 of them and all the different processes. They're just kind of like this here, picture is worth a, a thousand words. So, <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Hopefully the pace is, is correct. So what makes for a good project manager, right? Uh, being rich and be able to hire somebody who can help you do the work now. So here's some of the things that are, you know, are put together. The person, the pro, a good project manager has to be customer focused, right? You always have to have in mind the customer, the end user in mind, okay? You have to have good people skills. You have to get along with, you know, uh, different kind of people. Some are very, uh, you know, helpful and you have some time to deal with difficult people. How do you deal with a person who is hard? You know, say, well, I'm not gonna get that done. You know, I don't have enough time or, you know, uh, you're not my boss, you know, <laughs> things like that. So you have to know how to work with people, but you have to be able to be flexible. You have to, uh, to, you know, to be a good listener. You know, you have to be understanding, but yet you have to be firm because remember, you always wanna keep the project goal, you know, and, you know, in mind. So you have to be flexible. You have to adapt to change. You know, when things happen. You can just say, no, we're not going to do this. You have to look at it and see, you know, is it for the good of the project? And then you have to invoke uh, what's referred to as change management, you know, to, uh, to address any, uh, you know, any changes. You have to have integrity. You have to be honest, right? Uh, no taking uh, <laughs> bribes under the table. <laughs> uh, basically, you have to be, uh, you know, honest person. You have, when you say something, you have to mean it. Uh, and, uh, you know, you have to be, uh, uh, if you don't have a good personality as well, uh, you have to be approachable, you know, you have to be friendly, uh, things of that sort. I mean, everybody is not perfect, right? But sometimes you have to work on things and, uh, 
you have to have good leadership, right? You have a team of people uh, that works with you. Uh, you need to make sure some, there's different type of leadership management. You know, there are classes on leadership, right? So perhaps uh, if someone decides to pursue the project management, you know, uh, as a career, there's leadership you know, courses, but there's different styles. Some are very, you know, there's collaborative type of, you know, leadership. There's the, um, you know, the very, uh, quote unquote dictatorial where, you know, this is what I told you to do, this is what you have to do, you know. Uh, but usually what works better is collaboration. Uh, but then, you know, I think, you know, you may have to use a style uh, at one point of the project, you have to, you may have to be a, and use another style later on. So uh, you have to be well organized. Uh, you held accountable. So when something don't work properly, uh, they will come to you as a project manager, you know. Why is the project, why is that, why are we over budget? You know, and you have to be able to, uh, you know, to explain, you have to be basically be accountable for what goes on. Uh, they say that the project manager is responsible for the success of the project, right? And uh, some people may say, well, how come we got like a hundred people on the project team? Why is it me? Well, as a project manager, you take that responsibility and you're accountable for, you know, for that. So we talk about good communication skills, you know, uh, you have to, to be able to share the good news as well as the bad news, you know, but, Anytime there's some uh, them issue, you have to be able to provide, you know, uh, you know, solutions. You have to uh, to be a good problem solver, right? Uh, we ran into this this problem here. Uh, this person is out sick, you know, for for two weeks now. Uh, if you get the, you know, don't wait until the two weeks have gone by. Let's see, can somebody else help? You know, uh, maybe this is a tester or a developer. Or can I go and see if maybe there's another person who can help? You know. And sometimes we, we do that, or, you know, we're behind the ball, you know, uh, can people help? Uh, usually it's probably a risk of an issue. Can people work a little longer, you know, or maybe can we go to the business and say, this this particular, you know, uh, activity was gonna take us like a week, but it's gonna take like a month. Is it something we can do a little bit later on, right? So always look at ways, you know, to solve problems, uh, involve the team, involve the business, come up with suggestions and then, uh, you know, move forward. Have a you know be good at relationship and conflict management uh, that does happen. Uh, so be able to handle that. They also have you know classes and and training on how to deal with conflict, how to deal you know your situation. Be uh, assist in you know making the right decisions. Uh, have good collaboration, which basically work works you know working well. Uh, you know with the, the whole team, and then obviously be uh, be sound and solid in project management disciplines you know, and tools and techniques. So why do projects succeed and why do projects fail, right? So there's a few examples. You may be able to, you know, to come up with some on your own, but basically a uh, project is successful if you do it with, when you say you're gonna do it and within budget, right? Uh, when the customer and end user are happy, you know, they accept, they say, this is kind of what we signed up for. This is great, you know. Uh, when you do what you say you're gonna be doing. So you meet your, your specification and scope, right? We're planning on, on delivering all this functionality. We're gonna build, you know, this, this basketball court, you know, within time, within that budget. And, uh, and you know, we have done it, right? So uh, that's, that's a successful project. You have to, go to have good performance. You know, we, there are situations where you, 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 you do a project and then what happens after the project is done? People get their money uh, you go to your kitchen, you turn the faucet and nothing works, right? <laughs> Hopefully something you can't read your quality or uh, you notice that there's land is sliding around, you know, the, you know, one of your walls, like what's going on here? What is it that, you know, there's like a, a whole, you know, foundation maybe wasn't right. So a proper performance means that the project has to, you know, deliver according to, to specification and scope and it's got to perform according to what was planned, right? So. And operations refers to what happens after a project is implemented, right? So it's basically your production type of environment or, you know, the operation of, a, of a, you know, the, the, the business, the organization, right? So when you add something in, it should add value and not break something else, right? So those are some of the things that, uh, you know, you want to make sure that uh, there's no operations disturbance. And then one, another key is if you have a happy customer, you, and you ask for a reference because, you know, you may have other projects, other opportunities. The customer should be able to give you a reference for a job well done, right? So it's, it's a way to also look at it. And I'm sure there's other examples, you know, but these are probably some of the key things, right? You've done, you do what you're supposed to do on schedule, within budget, and with, you know, good quality 
and uh, you don't impact uh, you know other things by uh, about what you've done. So some of the failure criteria. Uh, if you have poor planning, right, you miss something. Uh, uh, you were in a rush, right, and you took shortcuts, right. You didn't plan the project properly. That that's that could cause a project failure. Uh, you don't have enough money. They say I want you to do all this stuff, right, and uh, now you run out of money. And some project they pull the plugs on them and projects have failed, they haven't been completed because you know they didn't have a budget to do it. A control change request, uh, people who are, you know, a customer or somebody in, in the organization they should keep on keeps on changing their mind, right? So if they go out of control, then uh, you know, uh, it's one of the other reasons why projects do fail. Uh, business doesn't care that it engage, you know, when we need the support, when we need them to help out. They're not there, they're not around, and you kind of end up kind of in a kind of in a black hole, right? So there's no interest, so there's no really good, uh, uh, you know, a good direction and support for the project. When the objectives are not clear, you know, what are we supposed to do? You know, uh, there are they ambiguous. Uh, build me a you know a slide as an example, right? Could build a project for you know a kid or something, but. They don't tell you what kind of slide they want, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, you don't track your progress well. And uh, we said uh, tracking is very important. Uh, and then uh, before you know it, now you, uh, you know, you you go, you went past your schedule date, right? Past your planned completion date, or um, you didn't deliver the, everything you say you were gonna deliver, right? Another issue is resources are not qualified to do the work, right? So you hire people and, uh, and they're not qualified to do the work. So I'm gonna give you a real example of that, right? Susie, and you, you guys heard the, the noise outside my, my window, right? Uh, I, had, I have a, a neighbor who hired somebody to, uh, to redo their kitchen, I think in the bathrooms, right? And I mean, you, you know, you figure it's gonna take a certain amount of time, right? And then um, I, I was doing something in the garage and the person who's doing the work actually came by and, and we you know, were just chatting for us uh, over the weekend. And so I asked him, oh, all you do housework and et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, what do you charge per hour, right? I was just curious in case I have a little price here. Uh, and he goes, oh, I don't charge by hour, I charge by the week. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, it's about 27 to $3,000 a week. I'm like, okay. Well, this guy's been going at it across the street for over 10 weeks. And he's just been like, and you know, on the weekends, on Sunday, he's cutting tiles, it's really noisy. And then yesterday, and this is you know, the truth, I heard some commotion outside. We we're getting ready for dinner. And uh, the lady, you know, the, the customer who hired the guy, she's like yelling, get out of my house. And it's like, what? And she goes, you've been going on forever. It's costing me over $35,000 already. And uh, this, uh, you know, this is an example right outside that your neighbor went through uh, of uh, maybe the quality, the resources, you know, the person that was not qualified enough, or, you know, there was no clear planning or, you know, understanding what needed to be done. But uh, my understanding is the work hasn't been finished, but she just got rid of this contractor. So just an example, make sure you have the right, you know, qualified resources. Uh, I mentioned also politics, like a corporation, people have an agenda, right? Perhaps you need something from their area, you know, what have you, and um, they're not willing to help. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not available, I'm busy. I'm busy, right? So how do you deal with this as a project manager, right? So, and then also technical problem and complexity can add to, you know, project failures. So these again are just a few examples. Um, I'm talking about methodologies, you know, over the, over the course of, you know, time things have changed a little bit. A lot of uh, projects started using a waterfall method methodology. Where you start, you know, you do your planning first, you know, your analysis, you get all the requirements done. Uh, you know, and uh, then you do your, your development, your testing, and some projects, you know, in the old days, uh, it could take a long time to get things done, right? And one of the criticism of waterfall is if a project takes you two years, by the time you get it done, right, 
whatever was asked, you know, the market changes, especially in this day and age, right, with the global economy and what have you. So whatever you deliver two years later for a complex big project may not even align with whatever the requirements were from the beginning. So requirements maybe were out, outdated. So now with the, you know, it's one of the criticism of waterfall uh, is that perhaps, you know, what you're delivering is not, does not, you know, meet the market demands anymore or anymore because you were, you know, using old, uh, you know, requirements based on old, uh, you know, uh, perhaps, you know, premises or understanding. But waterfall is a proven methodology. It works, you know, it's been proven over the time. Uh, Agile is something that came out a few years ago and basically uh, it's been used, uh, you know, in various uh, areas, in particular in product development. Uh, we, we uh, you know, we're using it as well, or a hybrid method of it. But Agile uses an iterative type of, uh, you know, development. You can think of it like, you know, you're, you you have everybody today has cell phones and they add features, right, on their cell phones. So every so often you get a request to upgrade, you know, your iOS or your operating system. So they do, uh, they add, you know, product functionality in an iterative manner and they do it, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, faster and in an iterative manner, and they just deliver, you know, the scope that's deemed critical, you know, important at that time. So there's a process of prioritization and, you know, we can go about some of the differences a little bit later on, but think of Agile as kind of an iterative, uh, you know, they use the concept of sprint to get things done. So it may be, you know, two weeks, four weeks, six weeks to get a whole uh, set of, you know, working functionality out there available to the customer or the end user. Iterative as uh, something that, you know, so you start, you may have a set of requirements, but you don't wait until all your requirements are done, right? So we're gonna take uh, whatever's available now, a little set, and maybe your project will use two, three iterations. So what we done now, we're gonna start working on doing development, right? And then once that's done and we send it to testing, then we take, uh, take the next set of requirements and then we do this iteration again, right? Uh, uh, execution and testing, you know, et cetera. And then we do that maybe two or three times during the course of the project. So, so you don't have long phases of requirements where your developers are just sitting there idle, perhaps, right? So everybody works kind of a, a little faster. Uh, uh, adaptive is basically kind of a, a, a methodology where you have to, uh, to be, you know, able to respond fast, you know, to, uh, to changes and you have to adapt your style as to, you know, uh, kind of what the demand is. Extreme programming is where you basically uh, cram, you just have, you work uh, very closely with programmers. So you have your customers, you know, working there directly, you know, with them. And they're just like, they basically, uh, the user is, is literally uh, standing, you know, uh, behind the shoulder of the programmer. The programmer is out there just like keen and, and writing code, you know, as things goes along. But uh, then hybrid is a, is a combination of methods. Uh, okay. So this kind of gives kind of an idea of what, where things fit, you know, and where. So uh, on the top left quadrant, quadrant is, uh, as you say, it's, it's heavyweight, it's very it's stable. So the PMI, uh, you know, uses, uh, you know, and also you have the waterfall. So it's some, the, the, the ones at the bottom are more procedural, you know, low collaboration, like waterfall, the, the, the analyst does his analysis and doesn't really interact with many people. When they're done with the requirements, they go to the developer. The developers go out there, you know, start doing the development, right? With a very small inter interaction. And then on the, on the top of the Y axis, you know, it's more participative. There's high collaboration. People work closely together, right? And then um, on the left side, uh, you, you know, you start with something very stable. Uh, things are, not changing rapidly, right? This is what we agreed on. This is what we're going to deliver. You know, don't bother me. This is what, what the business asked for. As opposed on the right hand side, you know, uh, the x axis is, uh, you know, we can, we're making, making small changes and we make, you know, we're adaptable to change. If things change, you know, we can do it on the fly. We're doing small iterations, you know, et cetera. So that's why on the right side, you have Agile, Scrum, Lean, XP, right, which I just touched on. On the left hand side, you have more kind of the waterfall type of you know methodologies, et cetera. So and a few kind of a side by side comparison of what Agile does and waterfall. Perhaps a lot of you folks, you know, and, and students might end up being working more in an in the in uh, agile uh, you know uh, framework or methodology. So you have continuous cycles, you know, you just uh, plan, do, and you know, and then uh, you know, release. 
so continuous cycles. Uh, as you see, it, you know, you have your you you do your requirements, you find the work, you do it on the fly, you release it, you know, and then boom, and then you do that, you know, that cycle again. So uh, it's small uh, teams that work very closely together. A lot of people work in agile, you know, do Scrum. It's not uncommon to see them uh, in one room. Everybody's together. You have these big conference tables. You have like eight, 10, 12 laptops. They're all sitting next to each other. You know, you don't have to go to a different office. Well, this was before COVID, right? Now it's all done virtual through Zoom, et cetera, right? But basically they work close to each other. And uh, that way, you know, and you also have your customer, your business in there. So things get done quickly. You don't have to, you know, send an email, wait one day for a response, you know, and then that's not what you ask for. You send another email, you call even format, everybody's in the same room. So you get your answer right there on the spot, right? So it's a lot faster and more flexible and you have to have your customers involved and engage in the process, right? So everybody works together. Waterfall, like I said, maybe for bigger projects, you do your requirements and uh, you can start your design, you know, if you're doing an iterative uh, process, even though you don't have all your requirements in here, you can start your design, you know, that piece of the requirements I was provided. And then once this piece is provided, then you can start working on that piece, right? So it slides this way. And then, um, so it's a little more sequential. Uh, you have to plan up front, get your requirements, you know. Uh, this is good, like if you have contracts, right? So you can really get the contract in there, you know, kind of right away. Uh, and uh, in here, they use the concept of Scrum Master. Here, you know, uh, Project Manager is very involved. It's really close to, you know, the, all the different phases, <clears throat> you know, and activities in the project, so. So I give an example of a project. Uh, this is just a sample project to build a website to order things. So as you can tell, uh, this is a, a software dev development lifecycle release, SDLC is an acronym, acronym uh, that's used for that. So the, really the project is to, uh, you know, to develop a website. So as you can see, it uses kind of a bit of a waterfall here. So you, you start your analysis. September 1st, right? Uh, you work with your business, they give you a specs, you have five days for that. Uh, now you received all your specs, you know, and you verify everything is okay. Now you're an analyst. Uh, actually, this should be in JNBA here. So your, your analyst starts working on the requirements and uh, for a period of about three weeks, all right? So th th this is gonna be a process that you're probably gonna take you over three, maybe four weeks, right? What does the developer do during that, that period? Well, the developer is probably working on some other project, right? So uh, your analysis is complete. The business is happy with the requirements. Boom, uh, now your development can start, right? You have all your requirements. Uh, they start their design uh, and, and coding and unit testing, gonna take them 20 days. Um, then they, you have to do your review to make sure whatever you're developing and designing is, is correct. So usually this is a process within the development team. You know, uh, make sure the code is proper. You got a couple of days, it could take more, could, could take less. And then now you finish your development about a month later, right? Now what happens, QA starts, right? So QA starts, uh, you'd think that QA would start here, right? Around November, but you notice that QA is starting in October 8th. And the reason QA, QA start, they can start building the test cases once the requirements are completed. So you can see there's a there's a dependency for the test cases to start with task number eight, which is this guy over here. So when the analysis is completed on 10.1, on um, 10.1, then on 10.2, the following day, I can start my test cases and do my review. So it's a way of, you know, of doing a little bit of parallel processing. So you don't wait till everything is done. Requirements define what what's plan, you know, what is it we want to build. So uh, so you can start and you know the, the team plan for five days uh, for Terry the tester to actually you know do that work, right? So then they execute all the test cases. This is a bit where your quality assurance comes in to make sure that everything that was required, right? So you have your own set of test cases to align with the requirements, and then when you, when you execute your testing, you tested everything that the, the development team did, right? And um, by the way, this, this is a waterfall process, but usually what I'm describing here can also happen in you know, an agile type of you know, scrum you know, scenario. 
So uh, this is more for software development, you know, for website, but uh, some of the, you know, concepts and stuff, uh, you know, uh, also used there. So, so uh, it's gonna take us about uh, two weeks, actually three weeks, because we have five business days, right? To get our testing done. And then now I'm done with my testing and I finish on 11.23. So in essence, we can five days or a whole week by starting our test cases, you know, earlier than when the development was completed, right? So we gain a week here as a way of doing that. So now your UAT is your user acceptance testing. This is basically where, you know, the customer comes in, uh, your user and says, okay, well, uh, this is what I'm paying for. Uh, they wanna go ahead and test it, right? So uh, what we do is usually uh, within IT, right? The, the business uh, analyst will help with uh, the UAT planning. Actually, this should have been Bob user Slack, come out a Gen BA, but basically they plan how they're gonna do the user acceptance, right? So I, as a user, I wanna make sure that, you know, uh, what I would do, you know, in a business, uh, uh, process, you know, would, would give me the functionality I want, right? So I want to be able to order things online. I want to be able to put in my basket. I want to be able to check out. You don't want any errors. You don't want any bands. You don't want any, you know, bad code. So they, they go through that process and they're estimating. So I don't know if you look at the planning in here, the execution is going to start when QA is, is completed, right? So um, my plan, I'm going to start my planning, even though QA finishes on 11.23. I'm going to start my planning a week before, right? My users are ready. Uh, I'll have a tester working. Jane is available. So in order to kind of, you know, uh, fast, fast track kind of the project, uh, I can do my planning, you know, right? I don't have uh, the, the, the product, my website ready yet, or tested, fully tested, but I can start my planning. And so I'm going to do my planning so that I can, by the time I finish, uh, Testing will be done and I can start my, my uh, test execution. All right. And then, uh, and then after um, UAT is happy, everybody is, is happy. Uh, then I'm gonna deploy all my changes to production. I'm gonna put everything up on my website, right? So people can go online and, and purchase things, you know, et cetera. So, okay. And then as a, as a company, you know, uh, as a project manager, we have a production support period. So the project was complete, but what, what happens if there's pro problems, right? So what we're gonna do is if there's any problems uh, for about a week or two, we're just gonna keep an eye on things. We're gonna be quick to respond. If there's any problems, we're just gonna, you know, identify those issues are, and then, uh, you know, go ahead and, and, and fix them and, and, you know, get them, get them fixed as soon as we can so that we don't, um, uh, impact, you know, the customers, you know, the, the users, etc. And this is an example of a Gantt chart. Oops, sorry. So this Gantt chart kind of reflects what we just went over. So you have your, your planning and analysis. Project starts on September 1st. Uh, on October 1st, I'm going to start my development phase. It's going to go all the way to 11.2, right? You know, this QA testing, you would think it would start after development, but we're doing our test cases right after uh, we finish our requirements here, right? So we're gonna do our test cases, right? So we're gonna get that one week. So otherwise this whole thing would be pushed out by one week if we did it here, right? So Terry, the tester finishes the testing over here. My, at which point I can do my UAT, right? So I do my planning before testing completes and then here I do my, my user acceptance testing. So I've gained a, literally about you know, a couple of weeks by doing it this way. Then my implementation on, um, on December 3rd, and then this is my post-production kind of monitoring and support. And my project uh, basically, uh, according to this, ends on 12-18. So if you look at my Gantt chart, this is a start date, September 1st, and 12-18 is when your project ends. You, you know, some people might think, well, I implement my project, you know, so my website is done, so I'm, I'm done, right? But usually that's how it works, you know, you wanna have a production support, you wanna do lessons learned, what is it we did our work, you know, where are the challenges we have, you know, we had problems. So let's learn from that so that next time we have to, do, you know, a customer something similar, we can do better, right? Close your project, you know, as a project manager and then uh, mark your project completed. So this is actually completion of your project, not, uh, not when it was implemented, okay? So uh, we've talked about the different methodologies. Uh, this is an example of a, of a, a Scrum board. 
Scrum basically is a framework. Scrum is a, is a terminology that comes from rugby. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen rugby. Uh, I've got pictures of it, you know, people playing in the mud. And every so often the ball goes out and, and it has to be put back in play. And all the players from like, uh, you know, they're all standing shoulder to shoulder. They're all, you know, pushing each other. Uh, and basically they're all working together, you know, to, uh, to get the ball out and pass it and try to score, right? That's where the, the term scrum comes for, from, but it's the concept of people working together, right? there. And I give you the example of people who all work together in a conference room, you know, sitting next to each other, et cetera. So scrum is a process framework used to, uh, to do product development. And the team determine, you know, uh, how to, uh, to work on something. They try it out. Uh, and then they have uh, sessions where they, they do reviews, you know, reflect on the experience and make a pro uh, you know, necessary adjustments and move forward. So this is actually an example of a team working in that conference room, right? The backlog is what the business wants them to do. So they write on cards. As a business user, I want to be able to uh, check out, you know, my merchandise online. So they may have a card for, you know, check out, right? Uh, and then the, 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 the backlog gives a list of all the, you know, the, the product changes that, you know, your customer wants. And then they get prioritized, they get sized, right? And then uh, they create all the story. This is everything that, uh, you know, that needs to be done. It's probably prioritized from top to, you know, to bottom, right? And they pick the cards and they work on them. So this is task to do, right? Uh, that that should, maybe that's next to be worked on. This is what the team is working on, all these items here, right? And this is everything that's been done and completed. So basically, eventually all these cards, you know, get put away, right? Uh, maybe this is a whole product where everything has to be done that's in here before you can, you know, uh, close, you know, everything. But it's an iterative process, right? So you have the work that needs to be done, gets prioritized. Uh, then the team works on it. Uh, and then uh, once it's done, they just put it here and then the, the cycle repeats itself. Okay. Kanban is also something similar. Kanban was something that was invented by Toyota. It's like just-in-time manufacturing. Uh, it uses Agile and then the team works together as a unit, right? So the goal is really, uh, uh, you know, to get things done. Uh, you know, in a, in a prompt, uh, you know, process. They, they work together, they figure it out. They put a car, this is what we need to do. Here's the key or thing that the works we need to do. And then uh, here's in progress and done. So there's some similarity with Scrum. <clears throat> uh, it's just, you know, different, uh, different approach, different uh, method. So now we get to the sample project. I think I may be able to over time. So this is where I'm gonna turn it over to Susie. Susie, I can, I can scroll if you want me to. Uh, this is a, the slide, let me know. Okay, thanks, Kamal. Sure. Um, so on this one, I think what I'll do is I'll just go over to the next one real quick. Um, so what, thank you, Kamal. Kamal has done a wonderful job kind of explaining uh, the project management and the different projects. So I thought I'll pick something that's applicable um, to what you guys are kind of going through hopefully soon. Um, no, well, not hopefully soon, but sometime soon in the future, um, it's applying to college. So you can see that project management is not just for big projects. It can also be something that is applicable to your life, the things that you're doing now. So I'm going to, that looks small. So I'm going to go ahead and may I share my screen, Kamel? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Can you guys see? No, we Are you guys see. able to see my screen? Yeah, no, no, we see. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. I stopped sharing. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so here you can see that uh, we created a very simple apply to college project plan. So project plan, like uh, Kamal indicated, it's just it's something that is temporary. You have a begin date and you have an end date. So here we thought that okay, let's start doing the planning from when you're in eleventh grade during the fall. And then we're going to end when you actually um, receive your um, acceptance, which is sometime in the 12th grade spring. Okay, so there's the beginning and the end. And then in the project, we, um, let's see, well, let's step through it real quick. So in the 11th grade, you might be meeting your counselors, you might be taking some PS, 
uh, PSAT, right? Um, making a list of the colleges that you want to visit and also the list of colleges that you want to go to. And then in the 11th grade winter, you might be narrowing down your college choices. You're gonna be preparing for your SAT, your ACT or your SAT subject tests, and then start learning about financial aid. In the 11th grade, your spring, you're gonna start maybe some scholarship research, a plan for letters of recommendation that you'll be asking. During the summertime, you might be taking some um, preparation courses for these uh, SAT or ACT, okay? And you're gonna be finalizing your college list. Then in the 12th grade fall, um, you're gonna be starting to take actions on some of these, right? So before you were doing a lot of planning, here, you can actually now be asking for those letters of recommendation, taking the, the SAT um, tests, and then you're going to start completing those college application, which is usually kind of due around, I think, December 1st, December 15th, depending on the type of school that you go to. Okay. In the winter time, once you've submitted your application, you're going to be um, submitting your financial aid forms and maybe sending the grades over to the schools. Then in the spring of your 12th grade, you're going to be checking for um, results from the colleges that you apply to. And then what to do if there's actually a wait list um, that you, let's say if you wanted to go to UCLA and they said, great, oh, we have so many people that apply, you're on a wait list. Uh, it doesn't mean we decline you, but you're just on a wait list. So check out those options. Okay. And then once you get all of the acceptances, then you make your final decision. And then after that, you make your final decision, you complete the enrollment paperwork for the college you wanna attend. And then there's the end, the closure of that project, which is celebrate your accomplishments. So I just, on the left-hand side, I wanted to kind of see how this actually maps to what Camille had talked about, right? In this project, in a project, typically at the very beginning, you have to define who your sponsor is. Sponsor is just somebody who initiate the project, um, who has a vested interest in that. And so usually a sponsor in this case might be your parents, right? Um, a stakeholder is somebody who is interested in the results of that. That could be your parents, that could be you, that could also be the people who help you prepare for the SAT or for the college application. It could be your siblings, it could be your um, grandparents and so on, okay? And then we go into the five phases that Kamel mentioned. Initiation is just the starting of it. Um, this is mostly, this project plan is all about the planning. But the initiation, before we start this, you would have gone through the initiation process where you thought, okay, why am I going to college? Is it worth it, right? It's, what is, is it possible? Those are kind of, what is the return on investment um, of going to college? Okay. What is the benefit of it? And then you go through the planning, you look at the scope, what do I have to do? This is your project plan, this is what you have to do. Um, how much is it gonna cost me to go to college, right? And then you create a schedule, a plan to um, go through step by step of what you need to do from um, your 11th grade to your 12th grade, okay? And then the execution is this, once you've created the plan, then you can kind of, this is almost like a checklist. Okay, have I done this? Have I done that? What's next on my list? Okay, then the monitoring and control. Uh, this is to manage and monitor progress. Um, once you've taken the SAT, what's the result of that? Uh, what's the score? Is it good enough? If it's not good enough, do I take another one? Um, what do I have to do to improve those um, scores? Those type, those type of things. Okay, And then at the end, once you get the uh, college results, the acceptance, then you can actually close that project. So I know I went through that very quickly. Um, I'm looking at the time. I think we're very short in time and we also have a game um, that we wanted to play with. Kamel, did you want to go through a couple more slides before we go to the game? Sure. Yeah, since you have control, go ahead and, and share your screen. Okay. But so I was just going to say, I think as part of an exercise for the students is would be to uh, to to you may perhaps use that college prep as an example, you know. Uh, go back to okay. So here are sure. Yeah, Sorry. I was just gonna say, as an example, and uh, this is great, uh, Susie. It looks it's excellent. But uh, things to take into consideration. You know, I think uh, Susie has all the tasks in here, but uh, something that you might consider 
say, you know, uh, you may want to go to a local college, you may want to go to a college in San Diego, right? So or maybe in San Francisco, even out of state, right? So it's something if as a student, you know, if you want to do a, as you know, exercise for project management, and using this as an example, you want to factor in the cost as well, right? So, uh, so there's going to be costs associated with the applications, you know, perhaps your parents might say, yeah, I'm all for you to, to go to college, but, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's part of the plan, right? Even though you're not in college yet, right? So you, in addition, you, you'd have to factor in, you know, the cost, you know, to, uh, for the applications and an application fee, right? You have to go to those colleges to visit the college, right? Maybe, maybe you want to go to a, a UC Berkeley, right? So you want to go and do a tour of the college and meet some of the people there, right? Although now there's a lot of the stuff is virtual, but if you have to go there physically, what would tax, you know, what kind of budget do you need, right? To, for the transportation there, you know, if you all going together for gas, right? Uh, what would it cost to stay in a hotel for two days, right? So you want to look at what kind of budget you need to do this, to do, you know, to apply, to do the school visits. Then you need to factor in then all the food, you know, the gas, you know, et cetera. So uh, for an example for, you know, a budget for, for that, right? And then once you pick your choo, your school, you know, a college, hey, what is it going to cost me, right, to, to go to college? And then, you know, look at, you know, what your scholarships are, maybe financial aid. And then, uh, then you might be left with, you know, some money that you have to pay, right? So it's probably less to do a Cal State than it is to a UC or, you know, a private university like USC or Stanford, you know, things like that. So uh, just, just something to keep in mind. But thanks, Susie. That was really good. So okay. I just added some, uh, the next slide, this is just uh, <clears throat> some of the project software that's available out there. I put a, a dollar sign or two next to it. One is Microsoft Project, which is what was used in the slides above, you know, to show uh, Susie's and some of the project plan I was sharing. So uh, it has an individual cost, you know, just like a lot of, uh, there may be a student version. So if you're in school, you might be able to get it, you know, for free or a small version like they do with, uh, you know, now you have, you know, Microsoft, you have, what, you have uh, 360, what is it 365, you know, that people use and you pay monthly eight, nine bucks, whatever. You also, also have March, Smartsheet, which is a, a, a software you can use uh, for, Agile as well, there's Flow. It's used for like small companies, small groups, you know. Uh, and a lot of the dollars are like per month. So it could be $7 a month all the way to like $10 a month, right? Uh, high is a little more, I think it's like in $70 uh, per month. Uh, right, you have Notion, so Teamwork, I've got quite a few of them in here. Uh, and I just leave those as, you know, as, a, as a reference, but uh, you're welcome to go online you know, after that and, and check some of those out. And then some references on the next slide, Susie. So this is basically, uh, you know, some uh, things you can go look uh, online. The Project Management Institute is the one, you know, that I kind of belong to. That every project manager I think should belong to. The uh, to their PMI.org. Uh, there's one uh, chapter in Orange County. There's one in LA. Uh, it'll cost over hundred dollars, you know, uh, you know, to apply, there's also a chapter fee, but they have a lot of programs, you know, they have uh, monthly meetings where they used to, now it's mostly online, right? They bring guest speakers on the project, you know, they, they present project for project of the year and the PMI is global. So it's, uh, I'm pretty sure there's also a uh, project manager uh, institute in, you know, in India, you know, perhaps in various states, you know, they're all over the world, in Europe, in France, Spain, uh, et cetera, so. Uh, and they do have a Congress that's offered, you know, annually. Obviously, in, in view of, of today's situation, they probably don't have that. And then that little blue uh, table on the right-hand side is some of the certification they offer. PMP, it's your project management professional. Uh, they do have associate in project management, so the CAPM, which you can do, you know, uh, without, I think, uh, having a college degree. You can uh, have a, be a professional business analyst, and those are basically for folks who want to do, you know, analysis, you know, write requirements and stop documents, and, you know, et cetera. You have your uh, job certified practitioner, practitioner, so it shows that you know you're, you're certified to uh, you know to a job as a you know as a project manager. Portfolio, as I say, there's a whole set of programs and projects. You also have a PGMP for a program management professional, and some people who manage programs, which are you know a set of projects, and they also have a certification for project risk management. 
So it's a very complex project where they would actually hire a project manager whose sole job is just to look at risk and manage risk and plan how we're going to do, you know, how we do we deal, deal with risk. And then a scheduling professional to help with putting project plans together. Uh, as we indicated, one of the issue with pro project failing was the fact that they didn't have, you know, proper uh, planning and scheduling, et cetera. So they're offering all those. And on the right-hand side, you have uh, these, I think, are offered by for, you know, agile projects. So you can be a scrum master, you can be a senior scrum master, you can be a coach, uh, and then agile value stream consultant. So uh, they keep coming up with new certification, et cetera. Uh, they offer courses online in project management. Uh, if you're interested, there's a UCs, Cal State UC Irvine has a project management uh, project. Uh, I mean, a uh, uh, program, school program that is, uh, Cal State, etc. So you can go online and look for those. And then there's various schools online. You have Phoenix, you have Ivory, uh, Divri, I'm sorry, and other ones. Thank you, Kamehameha. I'm welcome. sorry. No, you're welcome. And then this slide, slide kind of puts everything together. Uh, very, uh, you know, uh, yeah. involved and complex, so. All right, so I know that uh, the time is very close to the end, so let me just uh, take a few minutes and then let's play some game, guys. So, okay, um, good. Yeah, you can use thanks. the chat if you have questions, uh, you know, okay. feel free to, to send a question through the chat, but go ahead. Awesome. And so, um, Let's go ahead and, by the way, we want to just thank you, Kamel, for that wonderful presentation. Um, it was welcome. a lot of information, um, very um, well put together, so we appreciate it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just start the quiz real quick. And so, oh, bear with me. We're going to do a instructor piece. And so you hopefully should be able to connect to it. All right, guys, go ahead and go to joinmyquiz.com and then you can enter the code 311203. Okay, and I'm sharing my screen so we can see as participants are joining um, how many they are. Okay, I see Nethra, Murugan, Pravish, Neha, Gautam, Vikrant. And let me see our participants list. Are we expecting more? Venkat and Meda, Abhinav. I think I saw 17 people minus one, two, three, four, three. So I'm expecting. About 14. Let me see here. Maybe Venkat and, and Nithya can help me. Do you think we've got most everybody? Okay, there's wait, a little wait, What's more. the code? What's the code? 311203. Oh, I didn't see it. Oops. <laughs> okay, Amu Bash Bavisha. So 12. Okay, this is more like it, Egan and Sugan. I think we've got most of everybody. I don't know if we're short one. Um, Venkat, what do you think? Or Nithya, do you think yeah. we've got everybody? Yes, yeah, okay. we can go ahead, I think. Uh, Wonderful, let's get started, guys. Okay, here we go. Yes. Okay, the first three people who are on the top will get a small price, so play well. Six seconds. Okay, I think I've got everybody. Next question. Oh, you guys are quick on this one. Awesome. All right, here we go. Next question.
leaderboard, Provish, Vikrant, and Venkat. Right, guys? So if you answer quicker and get it right, you get more scores. Keep that in mind. What are the characteristics and skills of a project manager? Okay, very good. I think we got, oh, one more person. Oh, here we go. Okay, moving on to the next question. Leaderboard, Provesh, Vikrant, and Reiki. Oh, somebody's moving up. What is the name of that image that we're displaying in the screenshot? Ten more seconds to go. Excellent. Move on to the next question. In our leaderboard here is Vikrant, Ricky, and Pravish. Ooh, Vikrant is moving up. Success criteria of a project is. Oh, excellent. You guys are getting faster. Okay. Let's see who the leaderboard is. Vikrant, Ricky, and Pravesh. Next question. Creating a game application is considered as a task or a project? Eight seconds to go. All right, moving on to the next one. Let's see who's on the leaderboard. Nethra, Vikrant, and Babishna. Babishna. Okay, phases of a project. Is that a correct diagram? Awesome, that was fast. Okay, moving on to the next one. Netra, Babish, and Ricky. Okay. Very close game, guys. Who is the stakeholder in the sample project? Select like one or more that applies. Awesome. Moving on to the next one. We have two more questions. Leaderboard. Nethra, Reiki, and Meta. Oh my. Welcome, Meta. Okay. In the project, all activities were completed according to plan. But if the person was not admitted to college, is this a project failure? Moving on to the next one. This is our last question on the leaderboard. We have Ricky, Venkat, and Nethra. Project manager is a wonderful and rewarding career. It's true or false. That was the fastest yet. <laughs> All right, this is it. And let's see who is on the final leaderboard. Third, Nethra, second, Venkat, and Ricky, number one. Wonderful, guys. Thank you so much for playing. Um, I will go ahead and capture this, and then I will work with Nithya to provide some small um, gift for you guys who won. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and open up maybe for a QA and a um, or Venkat or Nithya. I don't know if we have time. I know it is 7.30 already. Yeah, maybe we can take one or two questions if it is uh, okay, and if we have any questions. Uh, yeah, sure. Anybody, any questions? Guys? Yeah. Um, before we do that, though, I, I we want to kind of take time on that second to last question, which was 
all of the this particular one, the sample applied to college project, all activities were completed according to plan, but the person was not admitted to college. Is this considered as a project failure or a project success? Um, Kamel, do you want to take that one? Yeah, what so, is the right so, answer? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So remember, let's keep in, in mind what a project is, right? Project has a start as an end, right? So really the purpose of that project was really to, uh, you know, to look at all those activities, you know, uh, look at all the planning to apply for college, right? To, to this is your college prep. So really it was about identifying, you know, with, with, what needs to get done in the 11th grade and the 12th grade. And so uh, the project in itself was to, to go to all the steps, right? To apply for college. Do you take all your tests, you know, do you do your applications? You send your letters of recommendations, right? Uh, the way uh, the the project scheduled it. So if you did all this and you completed all your projects uh, activities to till the last one, then you complete your project and it was a success. Yeah, if you want to share that, uh, yeah, I think it's farther down. No, just go to your just go to your plan, your project plan, if you don't mind. No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, if you did all these activities here, do you make your final scholar college decision, uh, follow financial information? Well, this assumes that, you know, uh, you went through all the steps, right? So in, in a way, if you did all your, you know, everything you were supposed to, to do, then it, it, you know, it, it can still be considered, a, a, you know, a, uh, you know, success because you, you, you know, tell you did everything that you plan to do. Uh, now the one about making a final college decision, follow up on financial information, presume that you were admitted, right? So, uh, so yeah, on that one we said the fact that the project was about college prep and if you, if you made all the, you know, the tasks and completed, you know, your whole plan, then, it, you know, it would be a success, so. It's not really the outcome really that matters, but the fact that you, you took all the steps necessary to apply for college, you know, and, and et cetera, so. Absolutely, thank you, Kamel, for that. Okay, we'll open it up for questions then. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Susie, and thank you, Kamel. Uh, so uh, any questions, guys? Uh, do you have anything uh, specific about the presentation? Uh, it was a very uh, useful and wonderful presentation, and uh, it was nice to have those questions towards the end, uh, kind of fun activity. Uh, any specific questions? Anybody? Okay, I have a question to start with, uh, if nobody has one. So uh, my question is more like uh, uh, with regard to if you're uh, getting into this uh, kind of project management, how much do you think uh, will it be uh, helpful if a person has a subject knowledge as compared to just having a business knowledge? Like, like you are uh, you are in the area of uh, software. So let's say, um, yeah, I, I believe both of you have some background in software, and then you are also a project manager. So I think it it is more adaptable. Mm -hmm. Assuming like uh, if you are going to be a project manager in my area, or if I'm mm -hmm. going to become a project manager because I learn those project managerial skills, and I become a project manager uh, in a software industry, whereas I'm. Uh, uh, education background is pharmacy. So, you know, uh, how do you think uh, that will be helpful if we have a similar educational background as compared to a different educational background? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Uh, you, you have project manager from all walks of life, right? You have people in the construction industry, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't know software. Mm -hmm. The thing that uh, to, to pass your PMP, uh, you know, it has to be within a certain range, right? Don't get 100%. So, so some, 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 uh, they, they used to have questions that were a little bit, you know, uh, technical, they require a little bit of, of math, you know, to do some calculations, so, you know, standard deviations, you know, things of that sort. But I don't think they use that as much. So I think it's more up to the individual. If you look at the skills and characteristics that make a good project manager, right? Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, anyone in my view has a drive and the, you know, the, the willingness to learn can be a successful project manager. Okay, thank you very you have much. To, yeah. You have to have good leaders, leadership skill, right? You have to, you know, to, uh, to, to relate to people well. You have to have a sense, you know, of uh, you have to have a drive about yourself, you know, uh, goals, et cetera. You have to, 
you know, accept challenges. You have to love working with other people, you know, so. But that's a good question. So in my in my view, personally, the right attitude, you know, can, can it's not like certain areas where you have to have certain skill set, right? So if you want to be a good football player, you know, a basketball player, you have to have that, you know, not everybody's born to, to, you know, to, to have those technical skills and, and so on and so forth. But I think for project management, I think uh, overall, uh, I, I think anybody who's, you know, educated, I think has a good shot at it. And also, I'm going to say, if you know, if people can take your questions now, you know, feel free to send them out. You can send sure. it to Nithya or something, and we'll take the time, make sure yeah. we address any Thank questions you. you may have. So, yeah. guys, if you have any other questions, uh, uh, you can uh, email it to me so I can uh, route it through Nithya to uh, Kamal and uh, Suzy. And uh, thank you very much, Kamal and Suzy, for taking time. And uh, we also thank uh, Nithya for, you know, helping us uh, organizing this session uh, because uh, she was the one who reached out to you. And uh, thanks, Nithya, for this uh, time and effort as well. So thank you all. Take care. Thank you. It's been Happy our pleasure. I want to wish good luck to everybody. I want to wish good luck to everyone. So thank you all very much. Thank, thank you, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe. Take care. Bye, -bye. Bye guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.